Hey guys, it's Chili here, and uh, I think it's time for us to do a little programming. It's been far too long. But you know, I've been busy with uh, life and stuff, yada yada, you don't want to hear about that shit. You want to get to the coding. So, I... The problem is, I really don't remember where we left off. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we'll try that. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I kind of remember this. Oh, yeah. I remember making this dude in my other program that I made for C Sharp. That's kind of a clusterfuck. But that doesn't matter for this. Not important. So, um, yeah. So this is very simple. We just, um,. We're updating a uh, surface sequence, I guess. We made this last lesson, probably. Uh, yeah, just a, uh, a class which uh, encapsulates a sequence of surface objects and allows you to iterate through them and draw them. Seems fairly simple. All right, and what else? I don't know. Maybe we made this last lesson too. I forget. Yeah, I think we did because we, uh, we. I went over inheritance, and that is kind of uh, that kind of ties into what I want to do in this lesson. Right. So we had a just a standard surface, and we inherited from it a uh, a special keyed surface, which allows us to have transparent portions of the surface when we're drawing all right all right good now what we're gonna do today is we're not actually going to um, progress per se in the sprite engine we're not gonna add anything new to the sprite engine because I have to uh, I have to cover a uh, topic Probably, I'm not. I I can't say it's the most important topic for C++. But what I am going to go over in this lesson is basically the thing that makes C++. I don't know. It's like it's like the topic. It's the thing. It's it's hard to explain. It's the holy grail of uh, object-oriented programming. Um, so, how shall I go about this? I think the first thing we should do is we should close off our solution. If you have it open, close it. And I want you to... So here, if this is the folder which has stores the current state of the, uh, the platformer project. And I want you to make a copy of it. How do I even do that? Uh, let me see. Give me a second. I'm going to copy it to my desktop. Ah, it's already on my desktop. I don't even know if that's the right version. I'm just going to delete the one on my desktop. Copy this one to my desktop. Rename this one. Rename the one on my desktop. And I'll just show you guys. Even though I'm sure you can figure this out. I'll call this uh, platformer. What should I call it? Virtualization. Dynamic binding. Platformer DB. Mm -hmm. And I copy this back into chili projects <laughs> and there so here it is <clears throat> so this is what we're gonna work on we want to keep we don't want to mess with uh, the current state of the platformer project or solution because the stuff we're going to be doing here isn't uh, really part of the final engine I'm just going to be doing a little uh, coding here as an example to teach a new concept 
and that new concept will be used uh, later on when we uh, code well basically we're going to be coding uh, the code that handles the behavior of a sprite specifically a character sprite but it'll work for enemies too I guess <clears throat> so that behavior is going to be coded using a concept known as a state machine and in order to uh, to do the state machine in a sexy manner uh, we're going to be using a language feature known as virtualization dynamic binding uh, I'm, I'm thinking that there is a word for it that I was going to use and I forgot it uh, one second no I, I don't, I don't want to pause the video because then it's gonna fucking desync and I hate that shit uh, virtual virtual function yeah virtual method mm, polymorphism that's the word I was looking for that was not coming to me cause I had a major brain fart but yeah it's polymorphism I'm still gonna name it platformer DB whatever who fuck cares it's just a name so we're gonna learn about polymorphism which if you've you know done a little bit of reading on C++ on your own you probably come across this uh, this term um, uh, but before we get there I want to uh, go over something that I've only really uh, touched on and that is inheritance so where you have a, a base class or a parent class and then you have a derived class or a child class or an inherited class or whatever the fuck you want to call it you've got a class and it inherits from another class <clears throat> so when that happens uh, let's, let's bring up the drawy thing. I haven't used this tablet in like a month. Uh, what what happens? Well, so you have a class, and it's called Surface, and you have another class, and this class derives from that class, and we'll call it. keyed surface <clears throat> so what that means is you have surface you have the class surface and that class let me just put this up here surface it's gonna have a bunch of uh, methods and or member functions and it's gonna have some data right so I forget what kind of data and member functions and shit Surface has in here. It has width, it has a height, and it has a an actual pointer to a block of memory that stores the pixels for the Surface, right? So for your data, you've got fucking ah, width, height, and. Uh, surface it's probably a stupid naming when you think about it the class is named surface and then one of the member data or data members in it is also named surface ah, well I'm not gonna change it now but in hindsight I would recommend you would name this something else maybe pixels or something surface dot pixels yeah that's what I would name it in hindsight but whatever it's just a fucking name right and then for your um, for your member functions you're gonna have of course the constructor surface you're gonna have the destructor surface <clears throat> and uh, you're also gonna have draw And that's it, maybe. Let's see here. Constructor, destructor, draw. And that's all you need. Now, 
when we inherit from this, what we get is... Uh, I think I should make that bigger. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we have keyed surface. Keyed surface. Why is it that I always get hungry right when I'm recording? That's it's very inconvenient. I'm going to copy this. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to copy this. Stuff. Copy. Uh, paste. Good. And I can control this one. Oh, it's totally not going to fit in there. Why do I always got to be so cheap with the space here? Okay. No. Delete that shit. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm building to something good here. I hope. Probably not. Probably just a waste in your time. But, well, you get what you pay for, right? Here we go. Okay. Ah, you had to ruin it at the last minute. You bastard. Okay, I'm going to make this, like, really big now. Kind of, I could have made that bigger, really. I mean, why, why fuck around? We got all this space. Let's make the biggest fucking thing that you can... Okay, that's good enough. Now, <clears throat> move this layer. I'm going to move that over here. Yes! Oh, yeah. And then here, we have extra data. So, keyed surface, first of all, it inherits from surface. So, it gets everything that surface has. And it also gets the things that it has. So it has a draw. Fuck. So it has its own constructor. Keyed surface. And it has its own destructor. Keyed surface. And it has draw. My tablet's getting all weird. And down here, it has the, uh, the key color. I forget what I called it. Anyways. All right. So it has all this stuff, and it also has this shit. Um, now, there's one little thing here. And that is, there's draw in the, uh, the child class, but there's also a draw in the parent class. So what happens is this draw overrides this draw. So you can sort of uh, cross this draw off. Because when, we have, when we're accessing a keyed surface and we call draw, we're using this one. And we're forgetting about the old one. So you can add shit to the old class like adding a new data member, key color. You could also add new um, functions. But you can also replace old shit. You can't, like, really delete stuff from the class. Not, not actually. But you can add new stuff, and you can replace old stuff. Now, let me just make sure here. I am interested in something here. Now the other thing is <clears throat> keyed surface contains basically a whole surface uh, object. Any keyed surface object will create will contain a surface object at its very beginning. Plus, you know, this stuff tagged onto the end. I mean, an object, it's really only just the data, right? So a keyed surface object will have the width, height, and surface at its beginning. And then at the end, it'll have the key color tagged onto there. Um, 
So it has a fully functional surface basically within it. And in order to initialize that the uh, the surface object or the surface object that's contained within the key surface object, you can, or in some cases you must, call the original constructor here. So when I'm uh, constructing my keyed surface, I call the constructor of its parent first, and that constructs everything about it in the uh, parent, and then. I just initialize the thing that isn't in the parent, which is the key. And then you're done. Now here's the other thing. When when keyed surface dies, it calls the keyed surface constructor, but it'll also call the surface constructor because there's a surface object trapped inside of the keyed surface. So when you destroy a keyed surface, the surface destructor is also called I think. <clears throat> Let's do a little experiment here to make sure. Because I don't want to feed you guys bullshit. And there's a little tricky thing about destructors that we'll get to later on when you're inheriting. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And then I'm going to start. Now in the game, game.h, all we have is we have a surface sequence s. And the surface sequence has keyed surfaces so we're not using any normal vanilla surfaces we're only using the keyed surface so when where where are we at where am I at here I gotta make sure I'm not doing something stupid uh, game okay I'm in game so this is um, an embedded object embedded into the game object and therefore when game is destroyed surface sequence will be destroyed and when surface sequence is destroyed uh, all of the surfaces will be destroyed and all the surfaces are keyed surfaces so we should get the uh, if I'm correct the con the destructor for surface should be called when we destroy all the keyed surfaces let's test the theory so I'm gonna start with debugging yeah sure Good. Now when I close this, yeah, I get a breakpoint here. So, we get automatic calling of the the uh, the parent's destructor when we destroy the child. Another thing that you get with inheritance. I mean, think about it this way. Uh, if I wanted a keyed surface and a surface that was not keyed, I could do it the way I did now, or I could just create two separate classes that are not related to each other. And if I made those classes that were not related, I would have to duplicate this code in both classes. And I would have to duplicate this code, right? Because this stuff is common to both classes. And the only difference is the draw is different and the keyed surface has an extra member. So by inheriting, you can uh, you can get code reuse, which is good, but it's not the main reason for inheriting. So I just want to make a warning here. This is very important. Don't use inheritance as just as a way to get code reuse. That is bad. You should use inheritance because it fits the actual system. Uh, first of all, you shouldn't really be forcing it. And second of all, uh, there is a there is a good reason, a, a design reason to use inheritance. Not just because it fits and you can reuse some code, but there's an actual thing that you can do with it. And that's what I'm going to get at. That's the polymorphism shit. But in this case, I wasn't really looking at polymorphism for um, my inheritance. I just inherited because... Uh, it made sense, and I'm going to tell you why it made sense, because there's a, there's a right way to do inheritance, and there's a billion wrong ways to do it. So the basic idea of inheritance, uh, I'm going to delete all this shit now. Die. Whoa. Shit. Okay, I didn't want to do that. I repent. 
Um, how do I all select and then delete it? Yes, and then deselect. Okay, was I talking about? Oh yeah, the, the the reason, the way that inheritance works, and the kind of paradigm that you should be looking at, is inheritance goes from general to specific. So for example, you might have a class that's like animal and uh, then you might have some other classes that are like this and it might be uh, reptile and uh, mammal right different uh, subgroupings of animal animals are very general reptile and mammals are specific kinds of animals they're mutually exclusive no mammals are reptiles no reptiles are mammals as far as I know um, and then here you can have you know like uh, horse and dude and here you can have like uh, I don't know snake and uh, I don't know something else dinosaur they're reptiles right I don't really know it might, it might be different I have no idea wait reptiles and amphibians they're different right yeah Anyways, that's how it works. It goes from like really... Actually, dinosaur isn't actually a specific species, is it? Shit. That was stupid. It still works, but it wasn't what I wanted. What's another reptile? Iguana. Uh, do, you know, do you spell iguana with a Q? <laughs> I don't think so. That's how I spell it. Iguana. I'm pretty sure I'm not spelling that right. I kind of suck at spelling, actually. But you get the idea, right? You're going from something very general and you're making it more and more specific. Although generally in, in inheritance, you don't want to go through too many layers of inheritance. And here you would add things that... You would try to add only things that all animals have. I don't know what those things would be, but it depends on your program. But if you were like keeping track of like body statistics, you might be like things like temperature or um, blood volume or something. I don't know, whatever. Things that any kind of animal would have. And then here in mammals, you could have extra things like, I don't know, like boobs. Mammals got boobs. And reptiles, you might have, I don't know, like a, like a, like a function method called hatch because reptiles, they come from like, hard shelled eggs or, or at least eggs that are external to the body right they gotta hatch is what I'm saying and then specific things like iguanas and snakes might have things that only pertain to those things like snakes might have a slither method and so forth and you get the idea right this is the way you should be thinking of inheritance general to specific and you try to you try to factor out all the things that are like all the things that are common to uh, some class or some uh, level in your hier hierarchy, you want to put that in the uh, the parent class. And all the things that make them special, you 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 take care of that in the derived classes. That's how inheritance works, kind of. Yeah, we'll say that's how it works. Oh, I'm hungry. So, why am I talking about this shit? Is this, how does this help us to make a wicked ass game where Mario jumps on shit and flips out like a ninja? Um, well, it all goes back to this virtual function crap. But, instead of just explaining everything in words and pictures we're gonna do some coding because that's what we do right that's my thing that's my motto just jump in there and write some code so we need we need a little challenge we need a little uh, something to focus our 
sexual energies on. Wait, no. Scratch that last part. But we need something here. Stop making pausing things. Breakpoints. I'm forgetting my terminologies. Wait, where does where does that other breakpoint go? I, I must have deleted it, right? Yes, I deleted. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the deal. Here's the deal. We're gonna make some tile or sort of tiles. We're gonna make some things that are like tiles that go on the screen. Like you know what a freaking tile is, right? You've played like uh, any like Super Nintendo game. You know what a tile is. And um, here's the thing about tiles. Let me yeah. Uh, let me get the Google machine up here. Now the Google machine is gonna tell us about tiles. We're gonna look at uh, what's the name of that game? Flash back tiles. There was like a good thing about this. Imi what? Yes. Okay. Here's the image that I'm thinking of. Now you got your tiles here. Here's flashback. That's really small. I was hoping for a little bigger picture. How do I make this bigger? I could save the picture on my desktop. I'd save that. And then what? Let me just make sure there isn't a bigger one on the page first. No, uh, this one looks bigger. I can't even tell anymore. Wait, if I click on it, will it go bigger? No. Ah, <sighs> wait, if I do this. Yes, kind of. It's kind of getting blurry, but oh, now my size is going to be all messed up. I don't know how to get back to the normal size. Anyways, here we go. Look at this. These are the tiles of the game. Now, some tiles, like look at the bridge here. These tiles are kind of like partially obscuring the character, but not completely. And there are other tiles where they're basically completely obscuring something. Like, uh, look at this tile. This tile is completely solid. There are no transparent pixels in it. You just you just plunk it down and it's just chilling out there like a big nasty turd. And then you got these sexy tiles here that are all like see-through and shit. So, you could do one of two things. You could treat all tiles exactly the same. And just assume that every tile may have a uh, may have some transparent pixels, and use the same routines to draw every tile. Some tiles will have no transparent pixels, and in that case, you'll just be wasting a lot of time because drawing. I think I've covered this before, but drawing uh, transparent pixels is drawing with transparent pixels is a lot slower. Because look at this draw here; it's just two loops with a put pixel inside but in this one you've got a test here you've got a test inside of a loop so you're gonna be running this test lots of times especially if it's like a really big uh, surface that you're trying to draw and the thing about tests is that they fuck up processors because of the way they work you wanna avoid branching as much as possible if statements. So an if statement, you might think, oh, it's only an if, right? It's a, it'll, if anything, it'll speed up the uh, processing because you're gonna skip some put pixels. Wrong. Ifs will slow the fuck out of your loops. I'm not gonna explain why. If you want to know why ifs are the devil, then look up uh, branch prediction. Look up superscalar processors or architectures. Look up pipelining and you will realize that if statements indeed are the devil especially when they're you know inside of a nested loop that's going to be run a, an ass ton of times so <clears throat> we can say huh, who, f who the fuck cares about performance and just draw all of our uh, tiles as keyed surfaces and that would be fine because, I mean, you know, we're running on, like, super powerful processors that will definitely be able to handle this shit. But there are going to be other cases where you're going to want to differentiate behavior in order to uh, get an optimization. So here, we technically, we probably don't need to run the optimization. 
but there will, there will be other cases when you're making real games where you will want to optimize and they'll be similar to this situation so this is one example of uh, a situation where we're going to be able to use polymorphism but first of all let's just do that thing that I was talking about so what we're going to do is we're going to just we're going to plop down a uh, a bunch of these tiles onto the screen and some of them are going to be transparent some of them are not going to be transparent now how to explain this to you guys I could make a new class called tile I think I will do that Ugh. yeah how do I want to handle this situation with you guys okay we're not going to make a new class called tile we don't we could but we're not going to for the time being we're going to just add to game mm, I'm thinking here I really want to pause the video actually now that I think about it, Camtasia was updated. There was a new version. Maybe I could pause it without fucking up my synchronization. Let's let's do that. All right, let's see if that totally desynchronized my audio with my video and fucked everything up. Good experiment. Um. Okay, so I figured out how I want to do this, and I do want to make another class. So uh, let's do it properly. Let's add a new. Uh, we'll add a new thing here thingamajigger I wonder I've never tried this in a while add class cuz I'm pretty sure I don't like adding class using this thing because it just it pisses me off <laughs> is what it does why can't I add a C++ C++ class just add how does it work I'm afraid to hit this add button I don't know how it's gonna happen oh there's a thing uh, base class no there's no base class yeah, you know what? Fuck that. I'm just gonna add this. Fuck you! I'm just gonna add the thing. H file. Add new item. H file. We're gonna call it tile. So we're gonna create a tile class. And we're gonna include surface. Nope. Surface. What? Ah, uh, fucking every fucking time. I'm pretty sure I ranted about this in the other video too. I'm no, I don't want to fucking no. Just, just remove it. Permanently delete it. Burn it. Send it to hell. Okay, I want to add a new item. It's gonna be header file, and it's not gonna go where I don't want it to go. It's gonna go here. It's gonna go here. I rue the day that I ever made this fucking assets folder. Ah, <sighs> I'm like, I'm gonna organize this shit. I'm gonna keep my source code separate from all my like, you know, other shit. No, not the way to go. Tile. I'm gonna capitalize the T. This time. Okay. Now, this isn't gonna fuck up, is it? We're gonna be cool. No, we're not going to start with the wrong symbol. And here we go. Surface sequence. Oh, don't forget the thing. Uh, yeah. Not standards compliant. Suck my dick. And what else? Okay, so we need a, cl a tile class. Class tile. Now, our tile class... Now, if you were listening to me and paying attention, you know that we're gonna we're gonna want two different kinds of tiles. 
We're going to want tiles that are transparent, and we're going to want tiles that are solid. So you might think we need two different classes. But you know what? We don't. Not really. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I want to explain this in an awesome way, but I don't think I can. So, first of all, surface pointer to? Yeah, we'll make it a pointer to the surface. Public tile. Wait, public tile. Now, how do we construct this mother? So, a tile is going to have a surface. It's going to have an int x, int y position. And that's it. That's all she wrote. And then we'll do a void draw. And I guess we'll leave graphics. So, what's the graphics again? Uh, fuck. D, 3D, graphics ampersand gfx do I have d3d graphics or do I have to include something apparently not and with that oh I guess we're gonna need here we're gonna need int x y and then we go here and we call surface pointer to draw x fuck Urgh x y g f x there yeah. all right so that should be everything we need we just gotta actually write the, uh, the constructor so actually the constructor will just be nothing and oh dick Surface is surface. Nope. Nope. X is X. Stop it! Y is Y. There. Okay. <clears throat> Why are you not making it so I can collapse this thing? Whatever, jerk face. I don't care. Um. Yeah. So that's that. Let's create a tile and draw it. Oh yeah, I guess I gotta put those tiles in the tile thing. I'll make it so you can download these, but I mean you could make these yourself if you wanted. It's just, so they're just uh, bitmaps. One of them is just gonna be a solid blue color. The other one is has some gay ass color on it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just, it's just an expression. But yeah, there's this weird ass color that I forget what it's called. It sucks. So I use it as the uh, um the what you the what you call it the transparent color because I am never gonna use this color in an actual model of anything because it's horrible. Now I'm gonna take these things and I'm gonna put them in. I want to say here. Uh, yeah. Why is there a bitmap of the dude here? And he's like the old dude. He's not the new awesome dude that I made with my program. Why is that dude there? Go away. Urgh, I didn't. No, whatever. Fuck you. Oh, you're going to the garbage. Empty you. Now you die. Okay, so. So, so, so. We got our tiles here, sol tile and trans tile. So, we's gonna do... Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Who's... Okay, I'm gonna make it the responsibility of the tile to destroy 
its surface. Even though the surface is going to be created outside of the tile and passed as a pointer, once the tile has acquired the surface as a pointer, it's going to be the job of the tile to destroy that surface. Let me just get that out there. It's very fucking important when you're working with dynamic memory allocation that you make it clear in your head which object has the uh, the responsibility or the onus to destroy resources. So we'll delete surface there. Good. Good, good, good. Now, we'll go to game.h. We're going to create a... Oh, I have to include the tile here. Include tile yes and here we're gonna do tile t now we have to actually create the tile so we go t nope not that one yes we gotta create a surface so let's create a new surface no Surface. Why does it always default to this one, which is not the one I want? Ever, ever, anytime, ever. I just never want it. Here we go. So it's called saltile.bmp. And there we go. We got the one I don't want again. It's probably a key power shortcut. Oh, all I need is the file name. Oh yeah, to create the surface, all I need is the file name. But here, I need an X and a Y. Uh, I don't remember our dimensions. I'm going to say four. Wait. I want it so that the dude can run behind it. So his X is zero. Y, 200. So I'm going to make this one 220. Wait, his X is going to be um, 400. I don't know. Make this one 230. Okay, good. <clears throat> I think that's good. So, we created a new tile uh, by creating a new surface, passing the pointer to it, and also passing its position. Here, we update the sprite, or not, it's not even a sprite, it's just a surface sequence. And here we're going to go tile.draw gfx. There. Okay. Build. Find errors. No errors. Hallelujah. And did I put the right name? Saltile.bmp. It seems right. What could possibly go wrong? Wait, I just... Here it is. So you see the dude's running behind the tile. That's cool. Uh, let's make another tile. Let's go to, oh, I'm so hungry, you don't even know. Okay. Tile. T2. We're getting super creative with the variable names here. I'm bringing my A game, if you didn't already notice. So now we're going to create a new and here's where it gets interesting. We're going to create a new keyed surface. Think about this for a while. Just think about this for a second. D3D color Wait, D3D color is a proper macro, isn't it? Fuck, now I can't even remember. Yeah, wait, no it isn't. XRGB, that's what I needed. Underscore XRGB. There we go. Now, what? No? No underscore? Just, just XRGB? No, it's not right. Fuck, I can't remember what the name of the... Th is it good? Yeah, it's good. There we go. 
Okay, so red was 255, green was zero, blue was 255 for that ugly ass color. So here we create a keyed surface. And we're going to put this one at 450 because tiles are 50 wide, the ones I made. We'll put this on 230. So what just happened here? Make a prediction what's going to happen. Remember, this constructor is asking for a pointer to a surface. Here I pass it a pointer to a surface. Here I pass it a pointer to a keyed surface, which is not what it's actually specified to take. What's gonna happen? Will it compile? Yes, it will. Does this not interest you? Oh, I'm gonna make this a, uh, what was that? It was a trans tile. But it doesn't matter, it's just a just a string. So I can pass a pointer to a keyed surface. And the compiler is like, yeah, that's totally cool. I'm cool with that. Now, does this not strike you as weird? Imagine I did some other like stupid shit, like uh, for example, I went int foo float pointer to bar, bar is a floater to a pointer to a float, and then I went bar is equal to the address of foo, the compiler is going to be like, what? Where is it? Cannot convert from int pointer to float points. It'll be like, what? What are you even trying to do here? Are you, are you fucking serious? How long have we been go going over this shit and you still can't get this shit right? You are an embarrassment. And yet, this is fine. And the reason why is, well, I deleted that nice drawing I had, but basically, uh, where's my, oh, here it is. Keyed surface contains within it an entirely intact surface. So if you have a uh, uh, that's surface a pointer to a surface it's totally cool with pointing to keyed surface because keyed surface has a total like a, in a uh, entire surface within itself. It has everything that surface has. So you can refer to it just as if it were a surface. And that's fine. You won't be able to get any of the uh, the things that were added later on. You won't be able to access any of the uh, the extra goodies, but you can treat it like a surface and that's cool. So make a prediction as to what will happen when I run this. I'm going to draw two tiles. What's it going to look Oh, I'm not going to draw two tiles yet because I didn't actually do it. Derp. I just saved myself a little bit of embarrassment here. Okay, now make a, make a, make a prediction on what's going to happen now that I fixed the most obvious of errors. <clears throat> No, I'll just, just do this one. Oh, so I've got my two tiles here, but this is definitely not transparent. Even though tile two has a pointer to a keyed surface, we got no dice here. Now, can you think of why that is? Well, basically, if we're using a surface pointer to a keyed surface, from the from the point of view of the compiler or the CPU or however you want to think of it, all it knows is it's pointing to a surface. It has no way of knowing that it's a keyed surface. All it knows is it has some kind of surface. It might be a base surface. It might be a derived key surface. But all it knows is I'm pointing to a surface. So when you call draw, you're going to call 
draw for surface. Even though the object itself is a keyed surface, you're going to call the old draw function. Because that's all you know is there. You can't guarantee anything else with that pointer. Wait, now I'm now I'm now I'm lost. Where am I? Here I am. Okay. So what are you gonna do? I mean we could go back to the idea of just making every surface a keyed surface, like going to tile, changing surface here to keyed surface pointer. Let's try that. Keyed surface pointer to surface. We don't have to change anything else in this file, but if we do that, where is it? Where is my error? Tile surface member cannot be initialized. Here we go. Keyed surface. Oh, wait. I should change this one too. Right? Because we want to take a pointer to keyed surface. But already there, you've had a big hint as to what is going to happen. Tile, tile, cannot convert parameter 1 from surface pointer to keyed surface pointer. So, here's the other thing, well, one other thing among many about um, inheritance and all that happy shit. Let me just do something here. I'm going to make my inheritance diagram. So here we have surface. And here we have keyed surface, which inherits from surface. It contains a surface inside of itself because it's inheriting. Now, this pointer can point to your vanilla surface or your keyed surface. That's totally cool, right? But if you have a keyed surface pointer, you can point to a keyed surface but you cannot fucking point to a vanilla surface. That shit is not cool. Why do you think that is? It's pretty fucking simple. Basically, if you have a keyed surface pointer and you uh Where is it? Here it is. So you have a keyed surface pointer here, and you try to point to a surface. Well, think about it. The surf the the pointer is a keyed surface pointer, and it's going to expect that there will be things like this key here that there isn't, and it's going to expect that there's going to be this extra draw function, but there isn't right because keyed surface adds new stuff onto surface so go back here if i use keyed surface to point to the base class surface it's going to expect that there's stuff in here that there actually isn't so it's going to try to call um the the override the overriding uh, draw Okay, because it's going to say, I have a keyed surface. Well, it's a pointer to a keyed surface. So it's going to say, I'm pointing to a keyed surface. So I am going to call keyed surface draw. It's going to call this draw. And in this draw, it's going to try to access the key, right? Except it's actually pointing to a vanilla surface. And a vanilla surface doesn't have a key. There's a key here. There's no key there. So it's going to try to access something that's not there, and that's never good. So that's why surface can point to a surface object or a keyed surface object. But keyed surface can only point to a keyed surface object. It cannot point to a vanilla surface. That is not possible. So. This is no good. 
we have to uh, tile has to be um, it has to be a pointer to a surface so that it can handle both keyed surfaces and normal surfaces. The moral of this story is that if you want to be able to uh, have a single pointer point to a bunch of different objects, it has to be of a uh, a more general type. Specific type pointers can only point to their specific objects. Now, so we're back to our original problem, which is Look at that. We're not getting our transparency in here. Even though we have a keyed surface, we've got no way of calling the proper draw function for it. Except we do have a way. And that is the whole, the whole crux of my argument here. The whole reason for this tutorial. So as things stand, Where's my thing? This surface pointer here is all we know about the object. So we can't tell if we have a keyed surface or a normal surface. We can do something little, very special that will allow us to call the correct function regardless of what kind of pointer we have. And that little something something is known as a virtual function. So if we make draw virtual and I'm not sure but I think you might have to do it here too. Virtual. Now even if we call uh, draw with a surface pointer that uh, that call is going to get dispatched to keyed surfaces draw function if it is actually a keyed surface if it's a normal surface it'll just go to the normal surfaces but if it's a keyed surface a surface pointer will dispatch the call to the keyed surfaces draw function and if if that doesn't sound awesome to you, then you're clearly, you just, you don't have the appreciation of this language. Because that's amazing shit. So we have a surface pointer. We're going to call draw. But even though we don't know which object, we don't know from the, from the point of view of the pointer and whoever owns the pointer. We don't know what's at the other end of this pointer. We don't know whether it's a surface or a keyed surface. But when we call draw, it's going to call the correct one. And the reason is, is because when you make this, um, where's my thing? When you make this function here, when you make this virtual surface and keyed surface, they're going to store a little bit of information inside of themselves which uh, lets them properly handle the function call so that it goes to the right function depending on whether it's actually a keyed surface or whether it's actually just a surface so making a function virtual will actually add a little bit of hidden um, data onto your class your objects and there's a little bit of overhead too but it's not really that huge, especially these days with proper optimizations and CPUs are also optimized for these kind of virtual functions. So, it's not a big deal. But just be known that there are hidden um, things that get added when you make a function virtual. Now, let me build, make sure I didn't mess something up here. Now, if I do this shit, it should work unless I mess something else up. Okay, so I messed something else up. Bollocks. Wait. Build? That's good. Debug. <sighs> Let me just try something here. Wait a sec. 
All right. So it looks like the actual color was uh, 255, 1, 255. I, am, I fucked it up, kind of. But, so if I use this as the color key, then we get the proper transparency here. So you might say to yourself, well, then it really wasn't the virtual shit, I, was it? I mean, it wouldn't have been transparent either way. So to prove to you that I'm not full of shit, I'm going to go here. Wait, where was it again? Surface. Yeah, here. I'll go back to surface. I'm going to make draw just a normal function, a normal overloaded function, not virtual. Build. And you see now there is no transparency. So undo, undo, go back here. With virtual functions, we have transparency. So when we uh, when we call draw using uh, a surface pointer on a surface we get just your normal drawing and when we call draw using a surface pointer on a keyed surface we get the keyed surfaces draw function and that my friends is what we call polymorphism or dynamic binding virtual functions that's what it is and it allows you to have a single pointer and all, although the pointer from the pointers point of view it's only one kind of thing or you don't know what kind of thing it is you can have that pointer point to a whole bunch of different shit and all that shit can behave differently and it's all from the same pointer and this allows us to do a lot of neat shit in C++ and this is probably the main reason why you should be uh, inheriting stuff. It's to get access to this um, to this virtual inher or not virtual inheritance, but uh, uh, virtual overloading of functions, which will allow you to have uh, well, it allows you to do a lot of different things. But like, let's say you have a uh, a game, and it has a ton of different objects in the game environment right like hundreds of different um, types of objects and without this kind of virtual inheritance you would have to have separate arrays for every different type of object and you'd have to run through each of those arrays and call the draw functions or the update functions or whatever but if you have virtual inheritance, you can have all the objects derive from some kind of a uh, base uh, or uh, interface, which I'll get into later. It's a special, special case of inheritance. So you could make an interface base class, which is like drawable. And all that drawable has is it just has, it de declares one function, which is the draw function. And so all classes that derive from drawable, they all also have draw functions but their draw functions are all different and then you make a single array and you call it the drawable array and it holds every object in your entire game or in your entire uh, environment and when you call draw on each of those objects it will draw them from their own unique draw routines and that's just one example of what you can do with the uh, dynamic binding polymorphism right that's the uh, that's where the word polymorphism comes from right poly meaning many and morphism meaning shape i guess so you have on one end on the client end where is it game you have tiles right and these tiles they just have pointers to surfaces but on the other end of this pointer you have different kinds of objects 
different uh, shapes, if you will, and they act differently. They have different behaviors. So even though from the perspective of the tile, they're all just surfaces, on the other end, they're all unique and they all have their own uh, ways of behaving. As many ways as you have derived classes. So, eh, about one hour of uh, tutorial, that's a good round uh, number, I guess. So that is polymorphism and inheritance in a nutshell. I mean, these are pretty deep topics. There's a lot to go into about them. You can get into some pretty nitty-gritty details and special cases. But this is the... Uh, that's the Cliff Notes version, I guess. That's the overview. And this will allow us to uh, take things to the next level. Uh, the, next, the next thing I want to work on is basically uh, controlling the dude guy here doing shit like jumping and running both directions and shit like that and that's going to we're gonna handle that I'm actually in the process right now of uh, working it out beforehand because I wanna make sure that this is the way we're going before I actually do it into tutorials I don't wanna waste too much of your guys time but uh, that's we're gonna handle this um, movement and other things like attacking or whatever using states using a state machine so everything like being airborne or being uh, hit by an enemy in a recovery state crouched standing those are all those will all be separate states and every one of those states is going to have uh, a state class associated with it and they're all going to be deriving from the main class, which is just like sprite state or something. And we use uh, polymorphism in order to uh, to determine the action of the or the uh, the effect on the sprite depending on the state and the input. So, yeah, what I was going to say is, if you guys want to get a little up, want to get a leg up on the tutorials and. I don't know, prepare for the stuff that's coming. You can look up state machines, finite state machines, FSMs, and state diagrams. And you can just kind of, um, I don't know, do a little uh, pre study there if you want. I mean, there's not, it's totally not, uh, it's totally optional, but. Yeah, where's finite state machine? Here it is. So there's like an actual, there's like whole diagramming scheme. I think that's my normal text size. I can't even remember anymore. Yeah, you've got like uh, different ways of uh, representing states and the transitions between states. This is actually this. Um, this programming concept or paradigm, or systems design paradigm, I guess, is really common in game programming. So we'll we'll be getting to it. Uh, so yeah, that's next uh, next lesson: state machines using uh, polymorphism.